Okay, we are back live in the. Um, wondering about the sound here, but we'll go with it. Um, I have on on the show today. I have Mike Hendrickson, a good friend of mine, and uh, obviously Mike's been around a long time in South Dakota. Uh, you know, a, a radio guy, a TV guy, and um, you know, an author as well. So. Uh, Want to start out I, on my board over there? Uh, got thoughts and prayers for everybody. Uh, you know, especially uh, in today's world, uh, the first responders, the policemen, the uh, you know, the doctors, the nurses, and uh, you know, just everybody that's out there helping uh, with the situation we got going on. And on my board, I even have I put today is Monday, March 30th, because days just run together right now. And you know, I was thinking. Uh, as I was looking at my schedule, I'm like, okay, it's it's Saturday or Sunday today, and I'm saying, no, it's Monday again, and here we are, <laughs> back at it. But uh, excited to have Mike Hendrickson on here. Like I said, he's been a uh, a radio guy, uh, my friend, and uh, you know he's uh, he's been a huge advocate for a lot of uh, athletes and coaches throughout the state of South Dakota, and uh, we're just excited to have you here, Mike. And let's let's test your volume and see if it works. All right, uh, Tess, it's a delight to be on. I've enjoyed watching these. Are you able to hear? Yes, yes. Okay, good, good. Yeah, thanks so much for yeah. having me. I really appreciate it. Sorry we're a little late. <laughs> when you have a couple of uh, old people trying to mess with new technology, uh, that's bound to happen. So Absolutely. I apologize for that. But, but imagine, Tim, once we come out the other side of this, can you imagine all the new things that we are learning as a group here over the course of this time that, that we're now forced to learn. So there's a, there's a lot of good that's coming from it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, some of the things that we're learning that, you know, and, and hopefully some of this stuff we'll never have to use again. Um, right. And, you know, some of the things that we're able to do during this time, you know, I uh, heard a lot of people talking about projects getting done at home. Uh, you know, I've used it to, to write some notes to people that, I have on my list or you know I, I like to write some handwritten notes and things like that that I haven't been able to do um, you know so getting back to some of those things that we have in our busy worlds when we get so busy we think we don't have time for those things and now we actually have time and I uh, really if you're not doing them now they're really not that important to you probably <laughs> <laughs> this is actually this is hastening the completion of my second book so it's it's been good from that standpoint uh, standpoint for me. So yes, we're we're trying to take advantage of the time as best we can. Awesome. And your second book is it similar uh, to your first one as far as uh, stories, um, you know, interviews and things like that, or what's the second one about? No, it's identical to the first one. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it's not just similar. Uh, that, listen, the success of the book was so gratifying and so wonderful uh, that I figured out, you know what, this is what folks want and they can't get it elsewhere. And I've been blessed to interview in long form literally hundreds of, of the greats and the stories you haven't heard and so much more uh, across the state of South Dakota. And, and so to be able to document that and to say that it's different to have the audio file and to have actually in written book form. It's just a great way to uh, to share history and to share some stories that maybe haven't been told. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's it's more, it's another, I think there's 16 people in, in this book and uh, maybe a little higher profile than my first book. My first book, for those of you that don't know, um, because obviously I haven't really talked about it much on social media. I only spent like a year just <laughs> plugging it constantly. That's but, all right. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's a compilation of interviews that I've done through the course of time. And, and so with the first book, I wanted to make sure that, that it was balanced in a lot of different ways. I wanted it culturally balanced. I wanted it sports balanced. I wanted people you've heard of and people you haven't, that the, the stories deserve to be told. Uh, I wanted it geographically balanced, so, you know, plenty of West River folks in there. So once I got that accomplished and once we got that sold out, 
um, I decided, you know what, I, I can do another one, but now I've done that one. So in this one, I can do a little bit more uh, higher profile folks. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to do that. Awesome. And when can we look at that coming out? Do you have a, a, a date? That... Uh, last, last Christmas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, was, that was my goal. But, uh, but yeah, the, here's, the, here's one of the reasons that I wrote another book is because of the fact I never thought that I would know how to write a book in the first place. Well, now that I do, I can't, I've only got so much room in this head, so I can't have knowledge up there that I'm not putting to use. Uh, in some some form so that's but the the thing that I did learn on the first book is my schedule isn't everybody else's schedule the person that does the uh, does the layout the person that does the um, you know the, the cover those types of things so I am hoping though that now that I'm able to just dive headlong uh, into it that uh, late spring or early summer we should be able to, to have this thing out and when it does, that means I will be coming to a bar near you because I had uh, uh, selling signs in uh, literally in bars across the state of South Dakota. And uh, it was so much fun because I got to see so many people and meet some new folks and hear some great stories. And uh, actually selling the book was as much fun as doing the book for me. Awesome. We look forward to that coming out and look forward to... Uh... I actually ran into you a few times on your, your book tour, you did. so to speak. And, and, I, and I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, you know, obviously, Mike, we're, we're in a difficult time in our world with, uh, you know, the, the virus going around and being quarantined and the social distancing and all that. Um, you know, you were out in uh, Spearfish for the girls tournament um, for the first day or did it go two days? One day. Nope, just the one. The one day, and and then uh, you know you were told, okay, we're we're not going on. What was the feeling out there? Uh, maybe the first day, and as the news was coming that you know I you know you had fans, now you don't have fans, and now you don't have anything. What was the feeling out there, Tim? It was without question the weirdest thing I've ever been through. Now, little did I know it was going to continue to get more weird. But um, let me just set up this story by telling you that there was one time, as a matter of fact, it was during an O'Gorman game a few years ago. We were on the air for the state tournament for South Dakota Public Broadcasting, and our truck literally blew up. <laughs> it blew up. The smell of ozone was unbelievable. Somehow, and it happened right when we were interviewing Roby, and I, you know, that's worth mentioning, but I'm sure it was pure coincidence. But uh, anyway, it was a situation where somehow our engineer, like plugging stuff into the wall, got a camera and a microphone to work. And so I ended up basically doing radio play by play on television because we had no graphics, we had no angles, we had nothing. Thursday at the state tournament out in Spearfish was 10 times weirder than that. There was questions as to whether we should be there. There were questions as to how many people, um, when they switched midway through, you know, they made the announcement during the halftime of the second game of memory, uh, if I recall that correctly, they made the announcement that they would be limiting tickets to the Thursday evening. The thing that was so weird for me was we go on the air, we walk in the gym about 11 o'clock local time. Well, remember, that was on that Thursday, and I, I wasn't checking social media much because obviously I've got, you know, a couple of ball games to broadcast. I'm kind of busy. But you, you check a little bit during timeouts and stuff. Well, the amount of knowledge that we had when we came out of that gymnasium on Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock was just exponential to what we knew when we walked in at 11 o'clock. And that's really when you got the feeling that, boy, I, I just don't see any way this continues. The, the one feeling was, and this was actually discussed, because of the fact it was the Class B girls. All of these are very small towns. All of these people are probably going to be exposing themselves to each other at some point anyway just because of the nature of the way they live and, and all of that, um, 
that perhaps you could even continue and not do the consolation rounds. This would have been a golden opportunity to experiment, experiment with that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's nothing to do with the virus, okay? <laughs> um, you always have to kind of explain that. But that would have been an opportunity to experiment with that. But then by the time Friday came and all of the, the more notices were coming, uh, it became really apparent that, you know what, it's just time to go home while we can and go from there. I will say I saw the strangest thing ever because at the tournament, they had already established that there was going to be no handshaking before or after the game, you know, minimalized contact. So I understand that. <coughs> Excuse me. I understand that. I've been talking a lot in the last two hours. I just got done with our other show. So at the end of the game, here are these bodies. And I think everybody had made it in every game because the afternoon games were, were not that close and stuff. So all afternoon they've been, you know, guarding each other and blocking out for rebounds and everything else. Game is over. Both teams line up and start going. And somebody goes, no, remember, we're not doing that. <laughs> And, and it kind of dawns on them, oh, yeah, we're not doing that. So the one team just slips over and Wait. starts waving <laughs> and around and went back to their locker. Uh, that was that was kind of when it hit me that, okay, this is, uh, this is definitely unique. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, you know, to go on and have it uh, postponed and, you know, we're still in that flux for all the tournaments now. Um, maybe some of your thoughts on, you know, they talked about possibly, you know, for the basketball tournament um, in June, in a perfect world, you know, if we can get back to school at the beginning of May, which that's looking more and more uh, like that won't happen. Um, right. But you never know. This thing could go every day. It could go, you know, up or down. We, we just are so uncertain. But uh, what are your thoughts if that would actually happen, that we would play a state basketball tournament in June? Well, I have told the folks at South Dakota Public Broadcasting that I'm wearing shorts if that happens. <laughs> but with that in mind, because that's the one time of year that I get dressed up is, is when I'm on television. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is. I am glad, frankly, though, that they didn't make a decision. I have no problem with that. Take a look at what we know now compared to two weeks ago. Think ahead to what we're going to know in two weeks that we don't know now. And if it provides some hope for some fans and some coaches and especially for some players, then I'm all for that. And and again, th these have been tough decisions. I saw Dan Swartos and Joe Al physically making those decisions out at the state tournament. And I know what a toll it was taking on them. It killed them to make those decisions when they did. So knowing that and seeing that, uh, experiencing that, uh, I've got no problem with the fact that they, if they want to keep putting it off for as long as they need to put it off, that's fine with me. Make that decision at the last possible moment because, again, will we know more in the middle of May? Yes, we will. We, will we know more at the 1st of June? Yes, we will. So I, I'm, I got no problem with it. And uh, we'll, we'll see moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you said, you know, this thing, we, we just have no idea. And, and those people making those uh, tough decisions, you know, my hat's off to them for trying to, yeah. you know, do it. And, you know, I spoke of this when I talked to Coach Roby earlier this week, is I listened to the, uh, the meeting that they had online. And, and the best thing that I came out of that is they kept saying what's best for the kids. And, you know, yep. um, you know, being associated uh, with high school kids and athletes and coaches, uh, it's about the kids. And whether that's uh, winning a game, losing a game, how you play the game, whatever it is, it's about those kids. And, uh, you know, I've, oftentimes we lose focus of that. And, uh, you know, just the, you know, what the those kids are going through is, you know, obviously for us it's different. And, you know, those kids are, they don't know what's going on. And. And, you know, right. we have to be those, you know, 
the, the people that take care of them, and I think they're doing a great job, uh, as you mentioned, just taking a step back. Amen. And let's, let's just uh, figure this out as we go, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get through this. Um, I've talked to everybody about uh, family on, uh, you know, as I brought them on to this uh, Facebook Live uh, event that I've been doing. This is episode, what is this? We are on episode 8 already, so, you know, feeling like almost a veteran, you know, unless... Until I, I got you know the the, uh, the mix up uh, this with the uh, technical difficulties again, you know if I could ever get that down, this thing would this thing would be okay I think. But uh, uh, you know family during this time, obviously you've got family um, you know around the state. Uh, is your son is out of state I believe, right? And uh, right. you know got grandkids all over. How's your world um, in the family? Well, before I get to that, I, I'm just going to tell you, Tim, I can't believe that I didn't make your top five. <laughs> but with that said, uh, <laughs> with that said, uh, the family is doing great. Uh, Michael and Marin up in Ramona, along with their three kids, uh, they have to be extremely careful. I do have a, a grandson that is immunity challenged, and they have uh, uh, been taking great care of, of him. Uh, Deb, my wife, was actually up there. She was up there during state tournaments, which she does an awful lot. Um, we have not gotten up to the cities to go see my son and his wife and their two daughters, and uh, uh, nor will we. And frankly, you know, and, and Deb tells this story. Um, she was, you know, thinking, well, maybe towards the beginning of this thing, you know, she had time now. She could run up to the cities, and and basically, JD, my son, sort of said, "Well, mom, we don't we don't really want you to." And of course, the mindset is that, "Oh my gosh, they don't want me coming in and, and exposing you know the the babies, the three year old and the ten month old, I guess now, um, to the to the virus." But then it dawned on her, what JD was actually saying is, "Mom, we don't want you exposed." Because we're the target audience. You know, everything that we have heard, and we're learning there is no specific target, yeah. but everything we have heard is that all of us are that are over 60 are the target. So that's been, been very unique. But we've been FaceTiming, and again, all the, all the technical stuff that we can do now. As a matter of fact, we even with some friends of ours, um, we uh, had a virtual happy hour with a bunch of friends of ours on Friday from our friends down in Lincoln. And then we did the same thing on Sunday with a bunch of friends in Dells. We moved to Harrisburg this fall. Now I will tell you, and I'm sorry if this kind of messes up, but again, with people, because we're all similar age, the first five minutes of those happy hours were basically, <laughs> is this right? Yeah. Where, where do we, I, I, do, I was put, put, pushing that button. What do you, do? so there you go. But, uh, but once we got those things figured out, then uh, then we had had a great time, and it was just good to see faces again. Because voices are one thing, but faces are another, and uh, and this is better. Absolutely, and and you know that uh, this little show that I've kind of started here is because of that too. Is you know, right. you know, I can call people and I can text people, um, but you know me well enough that uh, when I speak, uh, you know, this voice comes across on a telephone call sometimes it doesn't come across the uh, the best um you know it kind of comes across angry sometimes and things like that but i think when people see my face it you know they they forget about how bad my voice is and because my face is so bad you know uh, but you know we're getting through this um you know obviously with all you do for everybody else you know i've known you for a long time and what you uh do for me and what you do for the communities that's a tough part right now for us is that we can't be out helping other people as much as we'd like to in the way that we're used to now we can do it different ways um you know you've helped me you know collect bikes and and uh shoes and all this stuff to you know work with kansas out there at uh, lower brule and kyle out in lower brule and um just different things like that um but those people still need things you know um uh, maybe can you touch on what your thoughts are and have you been trying to help in different ways through this? Yeah, I really have. And, and I think it's, it's more important now than ever. Um, 
I think it's very important for people to set up PayPal accounts. I think it's very important, maybe Venmo, whatever your, your technology, or have, you know, two or three of those things. Um, Deb and I are very lucky in the fact that we both keep our jobs uh, through this. We know a lot of people that that's not the case, and we have no idea where that all is going to go. So consequently, you're right, we can't do the physical things. We can't uh, help out the way we, we would. But uh, the other day, um, this is where social media is such a positive. Uh, a good friend of ours, Kim Bartley, uh, came across a family that was in some, some dire need of some help with some, some mouths to feed. Well, you know what? I, I can't run and buy groceries, but I can help out by dropping off an envelope with some cash in it, or I can send a PayPal, or I can, whatever the case may be. You know, I ended up dropping something off in a mailbox so that, again, there wasn't that human contact. But it is especially important to people who still have to help out those that don't. Conversely, it is important, and we hate doing this as upper Midwesterners in general, we hate letting people know that we have needs. And so it's also very important for people to say, hey, you know what? Due to these circumstances, we need some help. Nobody looks down on you for that. All we're doing is looking to help. Uh, I mean, Tim, you're the uh, you know you're one of the great experts when it comes to to biblical quotes, etc. And and if there's ever been an opportunity to do for the least of these, now is it. And and to me, that's always been really you know what the Bible and what our faith breaks down to is is that almost a, a statement as simple as that um and so yeah we can help we can do uh we're just gonna have to change the way that looks too but everybody i would strongly encourage you get those electronic type of accounts except bitcoin that's a ripoff <laughs> but other than that anything else that that'd be fine but uh but we can help and and it's our it's our responsibility and our duty uh, as Christians and as fellow human beings to do that. Speaking of which, I'm going to tell you two quick stories. Have we got time, Tim? Sure, absolutely. Okay. I got two quick stories about Tim, all right? One of my single most embarrassing moments was with Tim. He had graciously asked me over to the Dakota Westland, Dakota State football game. And he takes me in the locker prior to the game. This is a couple of years ago. Takes me in the locker. I'm talking to the coaches. I'm hanging on the sidelines. It's really, really great. He's got his pre, uh, pre-game preach over by the uh, where they're tailgating. Uh, I go over and tailgate with the Dakota Wesleyan crew. And by the way, that reputation that they have as tailgaters, that's earned. <laughs> that, they're every bit of what their reputation is as far as being good at it. Anyway... He takes me over, and you were in the middle of, of your sermon, the same sermon that you give to the to the team. And just as you are, I had snapped a picture, and I am looking down to tweet it out. And the minute that I look down at my phone to tweet it out, that's the minute Tim decides to introduce me to the crowd. So the entire crowd suddenly whips their head to see me staring at my phone as if I hadn't been paying a lick of attention. I tell that story to tell this one. When it comes to helping people, Tim is the type of person that I like to help because he's boots on the ground. As you mentioned, Kansas and Kyle Middleton, what they're doing out at Lower Rule, that's boots on the ground, no administration, just getting stuff to people that need stuff. And so Tim is also incredibly bad at blowing his own horn and, and asking for you to support it. So I'm going to do it for you today. This is this is the danger of having me on. Please find him on PayPal. Please find him, whatever the case may be. Eventually, we'll get back to having meetings. Invite him to your meeting and give him an honorarium. Because every time that he takes in, goes right back out to help other people. And again, he's being the hands and feet and that's the type of folks we need to support. That's why I've been just so delighted 
to do that for you through the course of the year. So you're not going to blow your own horn. <laughs> I'm pretty good at blowing horns. So that's what you get for having me on. I, I appreciate that. And you mentioned, um, you know, people going through this, you know, tough time. And, um, you know, a couple things that when you said that, uh, that stuck with me. Uh, the question is, do you deserve grace is a question that I ask or I think about. And everybody deserves it. And, you know, yep. those people that are hurting right now, uh, struggling through whatever it may be, uh, you deserve grace. And there's somebody here for you. Um, whether, you know, you reach out to me or somebody else, there's somebody there for you. And the other thing is, um, when, you know, we talk, I talk about faith a lot. But uh, the other thing I like to say is, I like to see the church in you. You know, we like to go to church and, you know, that's important. But I like to see the church in people. You know, what are you doing for people? And what, you know, you just, um, you know, taking five minutes of your time to talk about higher power sports means the world to me. And, um, you know, that what you do is in giving back to uh, the communities and to that young family that you talked about earlier, just dropping an envelope on. That's the church in us. Um, you know, again, we love to go to the church and, and you know, be part of that. But. But we got once we walk out, what are we doing for each other? And um, Mike, I appreciate what you do for me, for Higher Power Sports, for all the uh, uh, high school athletes, the high school coaches, the, you know, the area colleges, and everything like that. You're a huge advocate, and uh, you make the experience for those kids better because of what you do. I have a, a question. Uh, somebody asked. I think it was Craig Levis asked, "What's the best high school basketball game that you've seen?" Yeah, I, I get a lot of those. i got to be honest with you. When South Dakota Public Broadcasting, when they were uh, putting together what games they were going to go online and what games they were going to air, that sort of thing, I had to have people send me a list. I don't remember the games. I, I, I honestly, they, they kind of blur together on me. Um, the, the best one I, that I remember was one that happened in Nebraska 50 years ago. So... Um, when I'm reminded, then I know. But I, I always answer that this way. The best high school tournament I ever saw was 2007 out in Spearfish. The girls' class A, it was won by uh, Vermillion. Uh, Jamie Parrish and his crew won yeah. it. But that game, or that tournament, there were three of the 12 games that were double-digit wins. Other than that, everything else was single digits, and on semifinal night, we had two two-point games back back to back. You could have started that tournament again on Monday and had a completely different one through eight. And there was a ton of talent in that tournament. And, uh, uh, and plus, we woke up every morning and we were still in Spearfish, so it was great. That's that's how I answer that. Thanks, Craig. Hope you are doing well. Uh, I miss seeing you around. Yeah. I miss seeing anybody around. <laughs> Who am I kidding? But, but, but you're among the top of the list, all right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, me, we are both very social people. We're very out in, in the public right. and uh, like to stop and see each other uh, along the road. And like you said, it's tough. It's tough for us. But, you know, we're trying to do our part. And I appreciate you coming on, Mike, and, uh, you know, being here. Um, I guess any last thoughts or Questions for anybody out there or for me, Mike? Well, I, there's, uh, yeah, there's, uh, I, I will make a statement. I know a lot of people are curious about, you know, baby booms and that sort of thing coming up in nine months. I'm more interested in the divorce rate in July. <laughs> That's really what I want to see. Um, I, I, because this is, is challenging, you know, to a lot of folks. But with that in mind, seriously, this is tough on everybody. Reach out. Don't be afraid. Whether it's emotional or financial help, you need a prayer, you need to talk to somebody, reach out because people are out there for you. Organizations are there for you. There are individuals that are there for you. And this can be really, really tough on people with anxiety, people with, with all sorts of needs that we don't ever know about. So just like you said, be the church, be a decent human being if, if it's not the church because um, somebody will be there to help. Absolutely. Well, Mike, I thank you again for your time. Um, I know 
I'm going to get outside and enjoy the nice weather, and it looks like we're going to have a nice day tomorrow, so get out and enjoy that um, in your yard or wherever you can without causing a, uh, you know, that lack of social distancing <laughs> or whatever we're in. So, um, But I'll, I'm going to go in my backyard and uh, maybe start a fire and maybe enjoy a happy hour adult beverage, uh, and I'll be thinking of you, Mike, and you uh, let's do this real quick. We, sure. we, we got another minute. Drinks for no reason. Um, yes, can you I, explain I that? Drinks, I started a thing called Drinks for No Reason because I got tired of going to funerals where we would always see people we don't get a chance to see, and we would always say, let's get together sometime. And we never do because our lives are busy. We've got stuff going on. We've got schedules. So I started a thing called Drinks for No Reason. I pick random dates and random bars. If you can join us for one or for none, for that matter, or however long you can stay, it's just a different way to interact with people and see folks that we don't get a chance to see uh, often enough, and I can't wait for the next one. Absolutely. So uh, follow Mike on social media. Uh, why don't you plug your radio shows, too? Uh, uh, Calling All Sports with Marco and Mike H. is on 14 stations. The South Dakota Sports History Show is a weekly show that's on 20 stations. Follow me at Mike Henriksen on Twitter. More of you do that than uh, <laughs> it just amazes me sometimes how many of you do, but I appreciate it greatly. Awesome. Again, thank you for your time. And uh, for everybody out there watching or going to watch this later, thank you for taking the time. And remember, uh, we're always here for you. Whatever we can do through Higher Power Sports or anything that I have going on, again, I'd like to see the church in you and see where that takes us as a community, as a state, as a country. And uh, we'll be talking to you tomorrow. I have a huge guest. This guy is going to be awesome. Uh, Chris Maxwell is on the show uh, with me tomorrow. And if you don't know his story, you'll hear a little bit about it tomorrow. This guy's amazing. He's a great friend of mine again. Um, but what he's been through in the last... Uh, 12 to 14 months and what he how he's come out the other side of it is is just truly a remarkable story And I look forward to having Chris tomorrow on our show. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much